Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Renowned Explorers. The Emperor's Challenge DLC just came out uh, mere hours ago, and I'm very excited to get into it and to record some new stuff. If you've never heard of this game before, Renowned Explorers, it's from Abbey Games, the guys who made Reus, and those of you who watch the channel uh, know that I love Reus. I think it's an incredible game. Uh, this is really something special as well. Um, so if you want to see more gameplay, or you want to see the most renowned explorer, what used to be the only mode. Uh, I have an older series on this channel. Feel free to go watch that. It really is, really is a special game. Uh, today we're going to be playing the new mode with some of the new characters. We're going to just be checking out the new, the cool new stuff that the, uh, that the DLC has brought, which includes uh, significant updates to a couple of the expeditions. So let's start with uh, with some of the new characters. So if you've never, uh, hold on. If you've never played the game before, if this is all new to you, don't worry, I'm going to be explaining some stuff here. Uh... Alright, so the idea is you pick three crew members out of this big list of crew. There's four different types. Blue scientists, green scouts, red fighters, and uh, yellow speakers. Who are good at different things. And each character has a couple of, uh, a couple of traits. Uh, number one, each character has their encounter abilities. Phylin, for example, can kick people in the face or try to enrage them with taunts, or excite them, get them excited about our cause and interested in supporting us. And so one of the things that's cool about this game is that you really do get to, you get to have a big say in how you accomplish things. Um, the encounter system is complex and really cool, and we'll talk about it in depth when we get into an encounter. But everybody has their own set of abilities. Uh, they have these level up trees, we'll talk about that as we level up. Of course, Basic stats, some slots for equipment, offense, defense, and a trinket that will do some kind of cool thing beyond just giving you stats. And each crew member has perks. We're going to uh, run into, basically the, the way the game works is we move from node to node on a procedurally generated map. And each node may have some encounters or challenges on it. And your perks often will determine how good you are at those challenges. So Phylon here is a beguiler, a dancer with a beautiful smile. Hojo Fumiaki is a quick thinker. He has a he has a big old broom and an anger management problem. And Dolores Garcia is a luchador, obviously. And she is a quick thinker and an athlete. She's a wrestler, you know. So there's a lot of personality in this group of characters. Uh, but with that, I think we're just going to get into it here. So the goal of the game is to, uh, well, first of all, to survive for five expeditions. Now, this game has some superficial similarities with Curious Expedition, in that it's about explorers, it takes place in sort of uh, kind of a similar amalgam of time periods. Uh, but that really is where the similarities end. It is a much more cheerful game. Uh, at no point will any of your crew members shoot each other or devour each other in the night or anything. Um, and our goal is to get to the end of five expeditions while completing as many challenges as possible. So this is it. We've just accepted the Emperor's Challenge. Phylin once more reads the letter she received personally from Beijing. Many congratu congratulations for entering the competition for the Emperor's Blessing. We cordially remind you that your respected colleague, Matthew Rivalu, has also accepted this challenge, and is already ahead of you. Furthermore, if you successfully complete your first expedition, Emperor Guangzhou has agreed to grant you an audience in Beijing upon your return. By the way, people from Asia, or people from every part of the world, if I mispronounce a name that I'm not familiar with, uh, my apologies, and if you want to correct me in the comments, I'm always, always happy to be more correct. So, the basic idea of the game here... Uh, Phylene wants to make a fantastic first impression and wants to investigate a mystic appearance, a druidic stone circle. Rumor has it that Celtic druids set up a sect here a long time ago. Uh, so the basic idea is we have this, like I said, procedurally generated map. We're going to move from node to node, having encounters with the locals, uh, running into challenges, and basically learning stuff, uh, appropriating treasures for our own benefit, and, uh, and yeah. Have playing the game, playing a fun game. So our challenges right now are uh, to train a crew member to have more grit. The grit stat is effectively dodge. It's basically what it works out to be. Uh, to gain levels of the engineer perk across our team members. To retrieve a treasure and to collect three collect tokens. We'll talk about the tokens 
Uh, I guess right now, actually, we're about to get our first tokens. So, as we move around here... What a strange noise! Music is coming from a meadow, but there is no one in sight. It seems that the wind, in combination with some strange type of twin flower, is making the sound. You listen for a while to the beautiful sound and make a note of the phenomenon. So we've got some tokens. Uh, we're going to accumulate tokens during the uh, adventure, and then between expeditions, we go back to London and convert our tokens into resources that we spend to buy upgrades for our crew. So you can see this study token, each one of these study tokens will give us four to six research, which we can use to write research papers, which will give us bonuses. It's a little bit complex. There's a lot of stuff actually going on under the hood here, but we'll, uh, we'll talk about London when we get to London. For now, let's keep looking around. The crew traverses a we an area that looks like it's never been trodden before. Hojo finds a weird, colorful stone that looks valuable. The crew goes to take a look. Sadly, a closer look shows the stone is no gold or gemstone. The crew dismisses the stone as a common pebble. Pebble. How unfortunate. Uh, so, we're moving around these nodes, and we're spending supplies to do so. We have a limited number of supplies, and if we run out of supplies, then uh, moving around will start to inflict debuffs on the crew. Again, it's not nearly as bad as uh, Curious Expedition. Don't expect anything lethal to happen. Uh, but it will be unpleasant. So nice, you found a grove full of edible berries, vegetables, and clean water. This will allow you to restock some supplies. So we get to go back to our supply camp here. And uh, that sound you just heard was Rivalu's crew. Uh, Tommy, Tommy here is Rivalu's fighter uh, working toward getting a treasure. We can see a treasure at this node right here, so I think I think it behooves us to go over there and try to beat Tommy to it. In the middle of the forest, you find ruins of some sort. What it actually was remains to be uncovered. The crew starts an investigation, and Hojo soon finds some ancient Celtic writing on a stone. It reads something like, Welcome to the other world, where we fairies live. We have been chased of our homeland by the Celts and now live in this magical place. The, uh, the developers do not, I believe, speak English as their first language, so every once in a while you're going to see some stuff like this. The crew was looking at the text with interest when suddenly a small person pops up. Eee, I am a fairy of old. Get off my land immediately or I'll cast a spell on you. It's obviously an orphan child. Nice try, kid, says Hojo. Still, pretty impressive that an orphaned kid is able to decipher this script. Phylin offers the lonely kid the chance to join you as part of your entourage, and the girl happily accepts. Yes, I can make up stories and help you with reports. Finally, I'm going to see more of the world. And so we get, uh, we get a member for our entourage. So our entourage is made up of, she's a journalist, apparently. Uh, she developed a mustache very quickly. Our entourage is made up of people mostly who give us bonus payout from our tokens. That's, that's basically what they do. All right, we've moved enough to uh, be able to stop and camp. So let's make camp. We're going to be able to make camp once every expedition. And the value of making camp is that it lets you play one of these campfire cards. We have a deck of cards here. Uh, the cards are made up of the... Uh, the cards are created by our crew. Every crew member has three cards that they add to your deck. And then there's a couple of cards that everybody gets, like the uh, plus eight campaign tokens here. We're going to, I think, take Phylon's card first. So uh, after we play our campfire card, it's going to discard the rest of the ones in our hand. We can decide to keep one, keep cards for the next camp if we want. I think I'm fine dropping these. Well, actually, this is actually pretty interesting. Maybe we uh, maybe we hold this one. But so each crew member has a crew story. Let's play Philene's. The crew finds Philene reading some sort of note. Curious to know what's written on it, they approach Philene to see what's up. Wait, what do you got there, Philene? She quickly turns around, hiding the note. It's nothing. Just, uh... Grandma's recipe for me and noodles. Rather suspiciously, Phylin quickly changes the subject. Who likes kittens or puppies? Adorable, right? Okay, so we, uh... Both of our crew members have a special response here. Ordinarily, the crew just believes her. and just get distracted by her chatter. But uh, very brave crew members uh, can... Let's see. Let's have Dolores do it. Phylin bombards Dolores with questions like, What color fur is the cutest on kittens? And wouldn't you want to be two puppies so you could play together? Dolores faithfully answers these questions, but senses something is not right. It seems Philene is a bit insincere. We'll move on. I'm keeping my eye on you. That was close. Philene's cover seems to be intact. No one can know about her secret mission, and she'll need a useful fool to complete it as well. 
With the intel funding and secrets she has acquired, she knows where to complete her mission. The Anagogic Archipelago. So, uh, this is the new expedition. We're definitely going there. And you can see that playing her crew story has given us a bunch of tokens. Uh, these secret treasure hunt and discovery tokens give, uh, there's basically, there's a small token of each color and a large token of each color. So you can see the study token is the small blue token, which gives a little bit of research. The discovery token gives a significant amount of research and also a significant amount of a second, uh, a second resource. So this is the large gold token, and this is the large green token. It's a pretty valuable crew story, even if just for the tokens. Alright, let's get some treasure. So we've encountered the Keeper of the Grove. Your crew is minding its own business, walking around in the forest and taking samples for research, when suddenly you hear the sound of multiple feet rushing toward you. GET OFF MY LAND! A man followed by wolves is charging at you aggressively. I don't know if there's another way to charge at somebody. So, this is our first encounter. The encounter system is a big part of what makes this game really cool, I think. So, you can see there are three different ways to complete every encounter. You can be friendly, you can be devious, or you can be aggressive. Our crew is pretty good at aggressive. We're not horrible at friendly. Um, but there are different rewards each encounter, so if we, if we complete this encounter in a friendly or devious way, we'll get some bonus tokens. If we complete it in an aggressive way, the druid will be knocked out and we won't learn anything from it. Uh, in addition, in combat, in the Emperor's Challenge mode, you get a challenge. Deal 35 attack damage to a single target with one attack. I think we might be able to pull that off. Alright, so they're aggressive. Every attack has an attitude attached to it. And it moves you uh, toward that attitude. Right now we have no attitude, so our first attack will determine what our attitude is. And you can see here, there's sort of a rock, paper, scissors thing going on. So these guys are being aggressive right now. It behooves us to be devious, because devious beats aggressive. And you're about to see why. Let's, yeah, let's go this way and deal with these wolves. So we're going to use Phylin's Try to Enrage ability. Phelan's not great at enraging people, so there's a chance this will miss. It did not miss. She called that wolf a chicken, and he understood what she was going for enough to be upset about it. So, we've become devious, and the fact that we're devious while they're aggressive means that we get plus 25 grit. Uh, grit is the dodge stat, you can see here. Uh, his 39 grit gives him a 28% chance of invading an enemy ability. So who has the higher attack power? Dolores does. So we're going to try something here. Actually, hold on. Uh, so we're going to do something a little fancy. Because I'm going to try to complete this challenge. Um, your abilities can target your friends as well. And friendly abilities heal your friends or damage enemies. Uh, but each attack has, in addition to its attitude, like friendly or devious, an emotion attached to it. You can see this has made uh, Hojo confident. And being confident gives you plus 25% attack power. Uh, this wolf is angry, is enraged, and it's cost him 25 armor. So now we've buffed up Hojo's attack power and reduced the wolf's armor, and I think we should be able to get a nice big 35 damage strike here to satisfy our goal. Okay, we, uh, we actually just barely got over there, but I'll take it. We get the first porcelain point. Rivalu is definitely screwed. And you can see, because we used an aggressive ability, we gained some points of aggression. Um, hitting an enemy, uh, using, an, uh, using the ability gives you one pip on that little bar. Defeating an enemy with the ability gives you a second pip. If we filled this little bar up, we would, we would become aggressive. Uh, and we want to stay devious for the bonus. It looks like friendly gives a bigger bonus, but just trust me, we want to be devious. I know a thing here. This, uh, this encounter has a different outcome if you're devious. Unfortunately, Hojo's not that great at being devious, and Phylin's not that great at being devious, so we're going to have a little bit of a hard time with this. Oh. In addition, each enemy is resistant to or weak to different, uh, different emotions, so it looks like the wolves are particularly susceptible to terror. Let's terrify a wolf. Get him, Dolores. This wolf knows that he could never stand against Dolores in the squared circle. 
I like to imagine that she talks a little bit like Macho Man Randy Savage. Alright, now because of the way this, these bars work, we don't actually have to hit with... We don't have, we don't have to do everything deviously. Uh, I'm gonna... Well, I think we should probably finish off the wolf. So we only have an 80% chance to hit with our weak uh, devious abilities. So it might be a good idea for us to uh, to use some other stuff to weaken the enemies. Okay, he has struck Phylin with part of a tree. That doesn't seem sporting. Dolores is the only one who's good at uh, good at terrifying people. So I think she can probably finish off this wolf in one hit. Yep, too terrified to continue. Get out of here. Uh, and then we gotta deal with this guy. So, I think we're gonna use Hojo's Impress ability. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it has a 100% hit chance. I wanna make sure we get some damage on this dude. Uh, number two, it does more damage than his trying to terrify. You can see this has 75% of his speech as its base power, while this has 100%. And the third reason is that it gives the impressed emotion. Impressed enemies have lower speech defense. So we can uh, we can get a little bit more damage out of our speech attacks on this guy. Oh, you know what? I, mm, I should have moved Phylene. She really doesn't have a lot of health or a lot of defenses. And if he decides to hit her with a tree again... Okay, she's still up. But that was a little closer than it needed to be, probably. I should be a little smarter. Alright, Dolores, get him. She straight up threatens to kick his ass good enough to terrify him. The druid accidentally tells you about a treasure. So we get uh, we get the reward tokens, and in addition, you always get two encounter tokens from doing an encounter. So these give status and gold, uh, which are used to improve the crew in various ways. And every time you finish an encounter, you get a buff that lasts for the rest of the expedition. So it really it behooves you to do encounters as much as possible. But, of course, every time you do an encounter, there's a chance that you will uh, have your crew members knocked out, which can make you lose the game. The druid is livid. Oh yeah? You think your civilization is all fancy? Feel the curse of Sir Nunos! He throws a skull at you and runs away. That's a weird thing to do. Uh, but you can only get this treasure from this encounter if you finish Devious. That's why we did this deviously. So, it gives us 100 Renown, which is the victory point resource in the normal mode. It may or may not have a lot of value here. Uh, two Insight Points, which we'll talk about in London. And, like all treasures, we get to select from a, a group of bonuses here. So we could take another Discovery Token, we could increase the value of all of our Secret Tokens for the rest of the game, or we could gain Campaign and Study at the end of each expedition for each level of the Archaeologist perk in our crew. And this is a cool bonus, but it's not well suited to our crew. We have no natural archaeologists, and this is just... It would be difficult for us to accumulate a lot of archaeology. So I think I'm going to take the buff to our secret tokens. Hmm, this antler skull feels uncanny. Somehow Philene is compelled by its dark properties. It must be a druidic relic, for sure. The crew leaves the druid and his forest behind. If one of the druids is here, the druidic circle must be nearby. That seems like reasonable uh, logic. So we completed the treasure hunter thing, and now we have two porcelain points. We are totally killing it. Win two encounters with the devious attitude. That is not my favorite challenge. Uh, the other reason encounters are good is because they give the crew XP. A group of wolves is being very protective and territorial. They're launching an attack on you. So, we should try to complete this deviously for uh, this challenge. We'll get an additional point of porcelain if we switch the mood three times. We might be able to do that. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start with a friendly attack. Now, they're aggressive, and aggressive uh, aggressive beats friendly in the little rock paper, rock, paper, scissors circle. So you can see, when we're friendly and they're aggressive, we actually take a significant armor debuff. But I went friendly because I know that when you're friendly, it only takes a single aggressive action to turn your to turn the mood uh, to turn our attitude to aggressive, which changes the mood. The mood is the description for the interaction of the two attitudes. 
So let's do an aggressive attack. So now we've changed our attitude to aggressive, which changes the mood to hostile. And we've already switched the mood twice. And now, if we do, uh, while we're both hostile, we get a bonus to the power of our devious attacks. So we can just take this wolf out right now, for sure. And now we only need one more pip of devious to make our attitude devious, which will change the mood, which will award us mood switcher. The whole game, basically, uh, is about manipulating the attitude system in encounters, and I find it really satisfying. I think it's a really well-designed system. Uh, hopefully you guys will get to see uh, a, lot of, a lot of us taking advantage of it. So we want to try to finish this off devious, both because there's extra re reward for being devious and because of Mr. and Mrs. Devious. Alright, we got our combat challenge completed. And we once again have terrified. I kind of wish the wolves would stick around. I want to see that wrestling match. All right, so Phylin has gained a buff, and we got encounter tokens. We broke those wolves' minds. The best way to beat such animals is by showing them who's boss. The wolves become intimidated by your presence and flee. The fleeing wolves are followed by crying pups. They make it away safely. And everybody's leveled up. Each encounter is worth 2 XP for everyone in the crew. So, uh, level 1 only takes 4 XP, you get it after 2 encounters. So, everybody's got this level up tree. Each one of these columns represents a level. So at the first level, we gain the Primal Roar ability, which is a cool AoE speech thing. And she can select either another Athlete perk or another Quick Thinker perk. Now we already have Hojo doing a pretty good job at Quick Thinking, so I think we're going to lean Athlete with Dolores. Uh, in addition to being useful for various uh, encounters and challenges, which we haven't really seen yet, but trust me, it's going to happen, uh, each perk gives stats. So, Athlete gives attack and armor, while Quick Thinker gives grit and speech. We're probably going to lean really hard into Quick Thinker on Hojo, and he can be our grit guy. So she becomes a, a better athlete, gets some attack and armor, and gets a new ability. Hojo... We'll learn the ability Reaching Out. Um, reaching Out adds three friendly pips to the mood and removes two aggressive and two devious. So this is a really good way to get into the friendly attitude, uh, no matter what the current state of the attitude bars is. Uh, trust me, that's powerful. We're going to take Quick Thinker Reflexes, because again, we're trying to buff up his grit. He doesn't have fantastic starting grit, but uh, there's a type of equipment that only scouts can wear that gives big grit bonuses, so I'm confident we can get him up to a reasonable place. Although Phylin does have much better starting grit, and she actually gets access to the uh, the boots, the grit equipment, so actually maybe she should be our grit person. Uh, she also has gained some rogue perks from her uh, crew story, it gave her two levels of rogue. But she can gain access to more beguiler, which would give speech and a little bit of grit, or Engineer, which gives speech defense and attack power. And as much as I want her to have grit, I think she's actually going to be our grit guy, because her base is so much higher. I think we're going to go for Engineer instead, just so that we can get working on this Engineer Team challenge. And she has gained the War Dance ability, which is fantastic, extremely powerful. I'm very, very happy to have this. Okay, this appears to be a blank note. However... Oh no, it actually is. Uh, walking through unexplored countryside often yields small rewards. Phylin is collecting some berries when she spots an unknown fern. Most people don't pay attention to plants, but the renowned explorers surely appreciate it when someone does. And you see uh, colored word in the, words in the text that's telling you what your rewards are. So we saw some blue, we're going to get some uh, blue tokens and some green. Yeah, a study and a campaign. And unfortunately, Rivalu got to f got one of his crew members to 45 grit before we did. He claimed the big uh, the big thing of porcelain, and we can still accomplish the challenge, but now we get half value out of it, which is a, uh, a shame. Uh, what I was saying about blank nodes is that um, often there is nothing at a node that has no symbols on it, but one blank node on each expedition. Uh, is the Hidden Horde. I thought it was going to be that, because there's often only one blank note on the first expedition, but apparently not. The crew arrives at a quiet clearing in the forest. 
While everyone takes a little break, Hojo notices that these clovers are different to the ones back in London. You take some for research. Ooh. It's another weird colorful stone. It looks as worthless as the other one that we found earlier. This crew is starting to think there's something up with this stone. Unfortunately, none of us are really good at science. So, uh, we have to select a crew member to try to figure out what's going on. And you can see we have different chances of success based on our different stats and our different perks. This is a place where somebody with a naturalist perk would come in really handy. Uh, Dolores. Why don't you give it a try? Try to investigate what's going on with these stones. Uh, we have failed. Dolores takes another hard look at the sto weird stone, but can't possibly find anything noteworthy about it. The crew accepts Dolores' analysis and continues exploring. Dolores can't stop wondering about the stone, though, and is a little distracted. So now she's debuffed. Uh, so when you get one of those challenges, there's usually a bunch of tokens for success, some kind of uh, penalty for the rest of the expedition for failure, and whoever does the roll gets some XP. So we will want to take as many of those rolls as possible, even though they give penalties sometimes, because XP is really valuable. The crew finds ancient Celtic holy grounds, a very interesting find, as there isn't much known about ancient Celtic mythology yet. Something worth investigating. The site's very interesting. There are runes with rituals described to honor Sir Nunos, the Horned God. Those who fail to perform the ritual properly will be cursed with bad luck, the runes state. You learn a lot from observing, but Phylon thinks you might learn even more by performing the ritual. Okay, this is not great. Uh, we don't really have... this is another science thing. Uh, you can see here the failure, uh, uh, the failure, th uh, the failure penalty on this challenge uh, costs us a resolve. Resolve is a is the resource that makes us lose the game. If we run out of resolve, we lose. Uh, the most common way to lose resolve is during an encounter. If somebody's HP bar gets depleted completely, they get knocked out, and you lose a point of resolve. Um, we start the game with only two, but we'll get two more each time we complete an expedition. We're going to go ahead and try to perform the ritual, even though it looks like we'll probably fail, uh, because I know that trying to perform the ritual gives you something, even if you do fail, something that's not listed here. So let's, uh... These guys have such similar success chance. I think I'm going to put it on Phylin, because I'd rather her get XP. If she's the one who's who we're trying to build up her grit, it'll be helpful for her to be higher level. Oh man, is she going to get it? Alright, she did, 18%. While performing the ritual, Phelan suddenly has an idea on how the Celtic Pantheon was structured. With this newfound insight, Phelan also gained a big interest in legends. Phelan vows to read more on mythology and gains the Archaeologist Legends perk. So I know that you uh, you get the, uh, the free Archaeologist perk as long as you try the roll, even if you fail. Uh, so that's what I was going for there. And this will be our Hidden Horde. It's also going to cause us to run out of supplies but it's definitely worth it. On every expedition, there's a hidden horde to be found, and you get to just pick one of the big tokens. I think we can, uh, early in the game, I think discovery tokens, I think science, research, is the most valuable resource. So we're going to take a discovery token. Unfortunately, we've run out of supplies, and Phylin loses speech power. That is a shame. We are going to uh, go ahead and complete all of the nodes, even though it's going to cause us to rack up a couple of debuffs. Uh, just trust me, this is, a, this is a smart way to do things. Uh, this game has a little bit of engine building in it, and I was talking about engine building in a video recently, and somebody asked me to explain, and uh, a video should be coming out pretty soon, I'm working on it, uh, explaining what I mean by that. But this is one of those games where building up resources early, any kind of resource advantage early, gives you a better resource advantage later. So we want to pick up as many resources as we can in these early expeditions, even at the cost of making the game harder uh, for a short time. So this day of exploring was not that exciting, but you did manage to find some rare edible mushrooms. A great party gift. And Hojo also loses speech power. And they're making, they're making progress on their various challenges. We haven't found even one collect token, which is pretty weird. Just our luck, a pack of hungry wolves is following you. Well, we know how to deal with wolves. We'll just shout at them until they get bored and go away. Now, actually, probably this is going to be a fight. Like, we're probably actually going to want to be aggressive here. Yep, extra resource. Well, 
So there's an extra encounter token for going aggressive, but there's a porcelain point on the line for beating this devious. Although, we could try to just beat the next encounter devious, because currently Rivalu has no progress on this challenge. Hmm. And this, the, the challenge here is to have two opponents excited at the same time. We only have one attack that excites. Does it? It does not knock them out. Okay. So we'll undo that move. So I want to have... We can knock out one of the wolves this turn. And then excite one of the other wolves. And then have Phylon open the, the next turn by exciting the third wolf. And that should get us the challenge completion without making things too dangerous. So we just have to decide, do we want to be aggressive or devious? I think let's go aggressive. Hmm. We might be too good at aggressive. So Dolores just punches the crap out of a wolf. Listen, game developers, I know you're going for some kind of verisimilitude, but man oh man, do I never ever again need to hear the sound of an injured dog in a video game. I don't know that there's any sound that is more upsetting. Uh, so we don't we don't want to do anything that could really injure one of these wolves. I want to take it pretty easy. Actually, you know what? I don't. That might not have been a good idea, because I'm not sure if he will count as being excited if the excite attack is what defeats him. Right, so let's move Hojo out of the way. Let's see if this counts. Okay, it did. They were There was a moment there where they were both excited. Right, and then we'll throw a punch to finish off the battle so that we end aggressive. Um, the way that these work is a little bit complicated. Uh, I'll explain it a little bit in the future. So, threat averted. These wolves will bother you no more. Stories like these will do well at the Renowned Explorers. So we get some campaign tokens. And Phylon loses some grit. Okay, that's fine. These, uh, these penalties only last to the end of the expedition, so it's not a big deal. Alright, we probably want to finish this devious if we can. The Druidic Circle must be somewhere around. Once you get there, this expedition will come to an end. Let's do it. The crew vigorously searches through the dense forest. It doesn't take long before you find it. A standing stone circle. The ruined, the ruined main men here will, uh, uh, must contain valuable information to study. It will surely skyrocket your reputation at the renowned explorers. However, we hear that familiar laughter. Behind you stands the French explorer Rivalou, who is your direct rival for the Emperor's Blessing. He got here just before you did. Thank you, amateur. Under Rule 24B of the Explorer Mandate, fellow explorers should help each other out. And I really need to take this main menu to impress a lady. So we explain all the hard work he had to do to get here, but he's not listening. Oh, please, explorer. We both know that this treasure is far better off in my hands. Allow my sharp companion Amir Akhtar to explain it to you in clearer words while I take the men here. Hey, wait a minute. But before Phylon can stop Rivalu, his crew scout Amir stops you. What's your problem, my friend? Uh, Amir always yells. Well, we must defend ourselves. Uh, so the loading screen tip here says that damage is slightly randomized. And if you're, uh, if you're sharp, you might have noticed. Oh good, this encounter wants us to end Devious. That's, that dovetails nicely with our goals. Um, when you target an enemy... Wow, we'll one-shot them no matter what we do. Well, when you target an enemy, it'll show you, you know, this is the expected amount of damage. There is actually a random damage roll. The amount that the bar shows you is the minimum damage you could do. So if the bar is all the way full, you will always, for sure, uh, get the... I don't want to say kill, but you'll always defeat that enemy. Um, I really like that system. I wish more games did it that way. Show me what the worst possible outcome is, and then if something better happens, you know, it's just a nice surprise. Alright, so he's devious. We want to spend a lot of this encounter friendly if we can. Fortunately, our crew's pretty good at friendly. And we have this war dance now. So the way the war dance works is that it, uh, it hits everybody adjacent to her, makes them confident, and it will give allies 
the confident trait as well. So let's not do it just yet. Let's move up. Take advantage of uh, of the war dance here. And I'm not even going to try to have four enraged opponents at the same time. Leaving four guys up while we try to play with their emotions is a recipe for getting injured. So let's do a little war dance. Alright, and now our attack power is all buffed up in case we want to get uh, a little rough with these dudes. So you can see, while we're friendly and they're aggressive, we get some bonus attack power. We're not going to stay friendly for very long, but I want to be friendly during their first turn, just so that we don't get, uh, we don't get too blown up. Alright, so that'll give us two pips of Devious. It'll be really easy for us to tip over into Devious mode uh, at the beginning of this turn. And, of course, we've given Amir the impressed tra uh, emotion, which means that his speech defense is lowered. Now, unfortunately, Amir is a scout, like Hojo, so he has a uh, he has some grit by default. And he can uh, he can avoid our attacks. This looks like it should be pretty good. Though. Her roar is terrifying. That was man. That did a lot of damage to Amir. I didn't think this boss was going to go down quite this easily. Okay, so all we have to do is hit him with a devious attack, and we should be good. You can see our devious attacks have an even lower hit chance than normal because of his natural, um, his natural grit. Alright, I don't want to hit him with a friendly attack because, um, dealing the final blow to a boss with a particular attack type gives you a lot of points of that type, and I don't want to accidentally have us end the battle friendly. So, Rivalu gets the combat challenge because we didn't, but we get that uh, Mrs. Devious challenge, which is worth more points. And Amir admires our sharpness. His tone suddenly changes. Good job, my friend! You are as sharp as a knife! Those who know how to hurt with words are truly mighty. I'd like to pay tribute to you with some research papers. Good luck, my friend! He leaves to follow Rivalu, who somehow managed to get away with that huge stone. Uh, all crew members gain speech permanently increased by one. That's not a bad reward for an encounter. But Rivalu's made it off, made away with our uh, our fancy treasure. Suddenly, a hooded figure appears on the scene. A druid pops out of the forest. Amazing! I saw how you handled that encounter just now. Defeating a foe with insults and manipulation. A remarkable skill. I'm honored that someone like you is looking for our history. He's honored that a total dick is, is looking into his history. It's a little strange. Allow me to help with the divination. Please tell me, what is the dream you chase? Uh, so I don't remember which of these items will be best for us. Uh, let's say I want to be wealthy and successful. I think that makes sense. The druid smiles. Ah, wealth. I'm sure you'll spend it wisely. I'll divine the earth for valuables, but no guarantees. The druid does some chants and urges you to follow him. He suddenly stops and points at the ground. The crew starts to dig and finds a unique treasure surrounded by gold. So here's three collect tokens for us, which will pop this challenge. And we got a Celtic Horned Helmet, which will uh, allow us to get a Discovery Token or to buff our Discovery Tokens forever, or to buff our Encounter Tokens forever. Um, we're probably going to be a pretty status-focused crew. Uh, we're good at Secret Tokens. We like to get Secret Tokens because of Phylon's thing here. So... Let's take extra status from encounter tokens. I think this is a good move for us. Uh, with this last find, your expedition concludes on a high note. However, it's clear that if you want to receive the Emperor's blessing, you'll have to beat Rivalu. Now it's personal. This time, it's personal. Alright. So we get that challenge. This challenge pops up, but it's immediately uh, put away. Only those top two challenges will persist over the course of the game, I believe. Alright, so we got a couple of treasures. Here's the result of all of our tokens. They're getting converted into actual resources now. We should have quite a bit of science, or quite a bit of research. Yeah, with the uh, with the three discoveries. So this, actually, this is a pretty good haul for the first expedition. After your successful expedition, you hurry to the Forbidden City. You are welcomed by the Emperor's advisor, Wang Tonghe, I think. A warm welcome, friends of the Emperor. I hope you find the Forbidden City as beautiful as I do. Now, will you please stand here to greet the Emperor? 
you know what? Let's do it. Let's the this one time we'll participate in the ceremony. We're gonna skip it uh, most of the time in the future. When Wang Tonghe walks to his place, Rival Lu speaks up. So, number two, still in the race? The Emperor seemed very impressed when I presented my treasure to him. Thanks for your help with that. I truly hope your own effort in the Highlands is enough for the Emperor to not disqualify you. A large gong sounds. Soon after Emperor Guangzhou arrives in the throne room. Oh, quibbling, I see the fun has already started. Your rivalry is certainly very inspiring. But I must say that one of you shows more promise to win my blessing. For now, I will keep you in the dark about who that is. The Emperor smiles a broad, mysterious smile. That does not look like a smile to me. He looks terrified. The Emperor must mean us. I feel confident. It's, it's definitely us. Chairman Pinkerton enters through the large golden doors and the Emperor addresses him. Chairman, you have my eternal gratitude for putting the International Society at my disposal for the purpose of this challenge. I'm sure this collaboration will be very entertaining, and perhaps even valuable. Now, wasn't there a gift you intended for these brave explorers? Why, there is. We have proper membership. I guess we were trial members or something before. So, plus two supply capacity, and 30% off El Vigilante's branded canned dog food. Great. And a point of insight, because it's a treasure. Treasures give insight. So. Now we're introduced to the famous challenge. Uh, every every so often, at every, every renowned breakpoint, we'll get some additional... Uh, some additional porcelain points. Renown is mostly accumulated from treasures. If we take a look at our treasures here, you can see. Uh, but some of our renown is from our tokens. All tokens give a small amount of renown. So, now that we're back at the world map, we're spending resources to improve our crew. Uh, the number one thing is insight. We can spend insight to gain tokens by lecturing in London, or by campaigning in Paris, or by uh, studying at a university in Berlin. But we will gain improvements over the course of the game that allow us to get more tokens from spending our insight. So I'm not going to spend any insight right now. Um, we're only allowed to bank so much between expeditions, but we're underneath our limit right now, so let's not worry about it. The next thing is research. Research allows us to write research papers, and these look a little bit like the um, social policy trees from Civ 5, if you're familiar with that. Um, we have to start at the top, and then we can work our way down one of the trees, and each tree has in it a bunch of different bonuses. So history is a good, uh, a good tree to push down if you're going for status-based stuff, which we are. Status is probably going to be our primary resource. Um, the observation tree is a little bit more science-focused. We're going to go for history. You're just you're just going to have to trust me for the moment. I'm not going to bother reading all of the things in every tree to you. You'll, uh, you'll see what everything does over the course of the videos. So, the very first thing is, upgrading our entourage halls will cost less status. That's fine. It's not a big bonus. Uh, next, Gain an insight immediately, and then gain one additional insight every time you finish an expedition. Uh, and then down here, there's gain a supply capacity right now, and an additional one each time you finish an expedition. So you can see, history is something you really want to unlock early, so that you get these bonuses at the end of each expedition. Um, we'll take a lobbyist, plus five more campaign tokens. Uh, some... We have 35 research left. So we get extra campaign every time we enter an encounter, and we get that extra supply capacity. Now, if we if we get Lecture Expert, which gives us extra tokens when we spend Insight, we'll also uh, unlock this bottom ability here, gain 15 Renown every time you hire a Helper. Uh, helpers are people like that journalist that we met, or the lobbyist that we got from the first, uh, the first research paper we wrote. And we can hire more of those people between missions with status. So let's have a quick look at that. So status can allow you to hire helpers. It can also have you hyper special, hire specialists. Helpers just in improve the payout of your tokens. More gold from collect, more gold from encounters, more research from study. Uh, specialists will give you unique ways to earn tokens and will also teach you perks. So Champion Vasilisa actually plays really well with our goals. So if we uh, if we give Hojo a 
quick thinker perk from her. He'll be a level 4 quick thinker and will get an extra campaign token every time he succeeds on an adventure wheel challenge. So let's hire her. Russian, Russian wrestling champion Vasilisa, known to be naturally slippery, wants to teach one of you quick thinker escape artist or quick thinker reflexes. Uh, Hojo already knows reflexes, but he could use escape artist. Alright, so he's a level 4 quick thinker now. And what is... He can also eventually pick up alert and become even better. Alright, uh, gain extra study tokens. So we, at this point, we kind of have to pick an attitude that we want to be our, our better attitude. Hold on, let's upgrade again and see what specialists are available over here. So we could go, we could focus on aggression. Pick up Emily the Decorated and the Ambassador. Some kind of secret agent, I guess, with a, with a fake name. And now we'll get an extra study and an extra campaign token every time we go aggressive during our battle. We're good at aggressive, and also I was looking for uh, one of these guys that would give us an extra campaign token. Because again, status is probably going to be our most important resource. And then we have a little bit of status left over, so we should probably hire a, uh, a lobbyist. I think it's a good idea to keep, you know, keep rolling in more improvements to your tokens. So the question is, do I think I'm going to end up with more campaign tokens or more encounter tokens from the next adventure? I'm really not sure. I think we're probably going to end up with a fair amount of campaign tokens, because I think we're going to the campaign token location. So, uh, we just completed a one-star expedition, which means we've unlocked the two-star expeditions. So we can go to the Hungarian Fort, the Mali Mystery, or the Caribbean Island. The Hungarian Fort is the focus, is the place where you uh, go for more status. But you expect tactician, archaeologist, quick thinker, and diplomat challenges. We're not actually that great at these. I guess we have one level of archaeologist from that event. We certainly have a lot of quick thinker, but we have no tactician and no diplomat. Uh, the Caribbean Island has nature and technique challenges, which favor, if I remember, Athlete, Survivalist, and Naturalist for this. And then I think this is like Rogue and Engineer. So we'd actually be pretty good at doing this. And aggressive, uh, an aggressive approach could make this easier. So that's not a bad fit for us. Or we could go to Mali. Rogue, Athlete, and Beguiler is fantastic for us. But I happen to know that Mali actually can be pretty difficult. And we're not, eh, we're not horrible at being friendly. Molly can be pretty tough, though. I think we're going to go to the Hungarian Fort, um, mostly because I want the status, and partially because I know that they made some changes to it, and we want to see the new material. So we're going to want to try to pick up some Tactician and Diplomat points. And we're going to get a lot of Campaign Tokens. So, what we have left is gold. We can spend a little bit of money to do things like buy perks with trinkets. Or we can buy items. You can see here all of the stuff that's available, but you can't actually buy this stuff until you upgrade the shop. Only the things that are, uh, that are not grayed out are available right now. So, uh, we need Tactician and Diplomat. This wouldn't be a bad thing to buy. Let's upgrade the shop once. By the translation guide so that our speaker has the diplomat perk group. And then I don't think we're going to have easy access to a source of tactician. There is a trinket here that gives you tactician, the tactician's notes. But unfortunately, it's pretty far into the shop. We'd have to upgrade a couple more times and then we wouldn't have the money left to buy it. So instead, let's buy some boots. I think this is a good use of our money. So we're going to buy Hojo some boots. Uh, I actually want these to be on Phylin, but she can't wear them yet because uh, she hasn't unlocked that ability. She'll get it at level 3. So let's buy boots for Phylin. And then we also... If we sell off our starting equipment, which only gives plus 1 point of a stat, so it's pretty bad. Uh, if we sell off our starting equipment, we can get to 150. Yeah, we can get to 150 and buy another piece of defensive gear. Uh, so we could buy something for Phylin to wear in the meantime. 
Or we could just buy a speech defense item for Dolores and make her super, super tough. Yeah, that seems fine. Alright. We're going to have a, a bit of a tough time, I think, on True Grit. We had a challenge there to acquire some armor, uh, which I wasn't really thinking about, which we sort of accidentally accomplished. Alright, let's do it. To the Hungarian Fort. We're not going to do all that well here, but the Hungarian Fort is a lot less dangerous than Mali is. And unfortunately, uh, Rivalu is killing it on these challenges. Our crew is not particularly well suited to the engineering part of this challenge. We should be able to catch up on the grit thing, but uh, engineer team is going to be rough for us. The Hungarian Forest. With the details provided by Lady Vaduva, you must be able to find the secret fort, which used to be an alchemy laboratory. We enter the forest. There is no time to lose. Alright, so retrieve a treasure, get some collect tokens. Or get some encounter tokens. Well, I'm great at encounter tokens. You have the feeling you could find something here, but then bandits grab you. All these lands belong to our boss, Boris the Claw. Leave your stuff now or prepare to die. Well, obviously we will defend ourselves. There are, I think, basically no situations in which you should avo avoid encounters. The value of winning an encounter is too high. So we'll get... Yeah, we can knock out the bandits, steal their loot, get those extra tokens that we, uh, we get from our specialists, and our challenge here is to deal 50 speech damage to a target in a single blow. That actually is going to be pretty hard. These guys have 0% speech defense, though. The problem is, I don't think we're anywhere near 50 speech on any of our characters. No, we're not. Okay. Well, let's see if we can do it. So who's got the... Nobody's got particularly low speech... Or nobody's got particularly low speech defense. And do we... Who's our highest speech character? It is Philemon. Okay, so what we're going to do here is... Impress one of these dudes. Lower his speech defense even more, because you do get a damage bonus for a negative defense. So, we get a 20% boost. I, I don't think we're going to make it. He's weak against Enrage. So I guess we should go for an Enrage. Ah, Enrage has so much, lo so much less damage, though. You can see her, her Excite is 110%. Thanks to the uh, the extra damage from that book we bought her in town. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's see if we can get 50. Ah, 42. Alright, well, looks like we're not getting this one. Another point of porcelain for Rivalu. And now we want to throw a punch to get us out of this friendly attitude, because that's not doing us any favors. All right, hostile, hostile. This is much better for us. Or uh, aggressive, aggressive. It's called hostile. Right, Dolores is a total tank with both of her defenses up at like thirty. She's receiving a significant damage reduction. Uh, there's no, there's no base mischance that happened because of the twenty-one grit that Phylon has naturally. Alright, let's lay these dudes out real quick, get our rewards, and unfortunately we're just, I think, going to have to accept some of the challenges you just can't get, you know? And I think that that provides an interesting tension in the mode. I really I really think that this mode is well-designed and a lot of fun. Uh, I played this almost exclusively during the beta. I don't think I played the normal, most renowned mode uh, at all. Let Phylon finish this off with another great big kick to the face. I can't tell if her boots have heels on them or not, but uh, a heel kick to the face, I imagine, would hurt quite a bit. So we get our tokens. We get an aggressive conflict resolution buff on Dolores. And we take their loot and leave. Alright, so we're going to be trying really hard to get a lot of these uh, sort of little challenges because we're going to have trouble competing on some of the bigger ones. This engineering thing is really not a great uh, not a great challenge for us. Okay, 
So that looks like a special node, but uh, it's a one-time thing that unlocks a bunch of extra treasures, and I've already done it, so we're going to avoid that node. Carrying this stuff through all the swamps sure is a burden. Who's athletic enough to carry it the last few miles to camp? Well, it looks like Dolores is. Failure here would cost us supplies, so let's go ahead and let Dolores do it. Uh, you still get the 2 XP even if you don't actually roll because you had a 100% chance to win. Oh, he's made some headway on the treasure. We have a nice zero supply path here. Ooh. Oh, we're doing that. You find the remains of a cart attacked by vicious bandits. You'll receive praise for traversing these lawless lands. Alright. So the, the little skull icon means an epic encounter is found here. Let's go see what it is. I'm not afraid. Bandit Leader the Claw. You arrive at the hideout of the Bandit Leader Boris the Claw. Keep out signs are hanging around, and the place smells of wolf. Farlin ponders how to approach the situation. This is where a tactician perk would be really helpful. But Dolores has a pretty good chance of succeeding, just from being a fighter and having lots of armor. Your, uh, your defensive stats very often factor into challenge rolls. That's why I usually choose to buy armor instead of weapons in the early game. It's also one of the reasons that's, that the boot equipment type is so good, because it's the only thing that gives you bonuses to all three of your defenses, even though, obviously, the bonuses are smaller uh, than, like, you would get from just armor. Alright, uh, so we could run away and not not risk failure, but that doesn't sound like me. Let's go for this. Dolores tries to come up with a tactical approach, but uh, maybe she should have studied her art of war a little harder. That went badly. While preparing Dolores trips, gets hurt, and alerts the bandits. None other than their boss, Boris the Claw, comes out to meet you. Who do you think you are? What are you doing here? Face your punishment, guy that I've never met or heard of before. You think you can take me, huh? You don't know nothing about my powers. Well, we do know that his powers aren't grammar related. So these epic encounters can be pretty dangerous. Um, Boris the Claw comes out with a giant cleaver. Uh, he would go on a rampage if we beat him deviously. Uh, if we beat him friendly, we would make friends, but that prevents us from robbing them. Uh, fortunately, aggressive is the way we want to go, and it's also the thing we're best at. So let's lay it down. What are these guys? These guys are all weak to enrage. Boris is resistant or immune to all friendly abilities. He seems normal, but they say he has special powers. Well, he's weak to enrage. We're going to lay on that enrage, I'm sure. Uh, so how much? You have 25 armor and 38 health. So it actually is going to be easier to bring these ones down with a little bit of friendliness. So we'll start with a war dance. Oh, I should have moved Hojo in. Uh, this heals Dolores and makes her confident, so she has more attack power. Alright, Hojo's a pretty tough dude as well, so we're going to have Hojo run in front of Phylin. Hojo has 25 armor in addition to a 22% dodge chance. We have to be pretty careful with our uh, with our positioning, because Phylin really is a lot more fragile than our other two party members. She has the best damage potential, I think, uh, but we have to be careful with her. Wow, this dude has a lot of health. It's been a little while since I've done this encounter. I did not remember him having so much health. Okay, so I think what we want to do now is move Hojo out of the way and take advantage of Primal Roar. Primal Roar does 40% extra damage if Dolores is enraged or confident. So being able to put her confident with Wardance all the time is really powerful. And this is going to give us one point of devious for using a devious ability. Plus one for getting a kill, plus one for getting a kill. Which is going to switch us over into devious mode, and that's going to satisfy Mood Switcher. And it leaves Boris terrified, which lowers his attack power. So that was uh, that was a really valuable thing to do in a lot of ways. I think Phylin maybe is just going to heal Hojo, maybe? Yeah. Let's just take it slow. It's just us and this guy. We can grind him down. And this way, we get to end the turn devious 
which means that we have plus 25 grit on all of our crew members because Devious beats aggressive in the little circle. So what do I want to do to him? It looks like the aggressive attack would actually do less damage because he has uh, he has armor but not uh, speech defense. So let's see if we can land this. It does only have an 80% chance to hit. By the way, I love the fact every uh, every uh, unit you can encounter, every person and animal, has different art for each different emotion they can have, and I find the I find some of those just absolutely charming. Okay, one more turn till War Dance is available. He's weak against Enrage. This might be a good time to lay down the Enrage. Or at least attempt to lay down the Enrage. Oh, nope, she missed. Oh well. This is what happens when you try to use the, uh, the attitude that you're weakest in. So we can avoid having to engage with these guys for one more turn. And then we all have War Dance available. And uh, Primal Roar shortly afterwards. So we can get some good AoE damage done. Alright, let's just hit him. We gotta build up some aggressive points. Uh-oh. I guess we, uh, we pushed him over the line. Uh, so now his stats are completely different. He has a bunch more armor. Uh, he is no longer resistant to confident, which is good, because we're probably gonna have to war dance soon. Uh, every attack makes him more confident. Re reminding him what a sad human being he is will soften him up. Okay, well, unfortunately we don't have sadden. And he has way more armor now, so physical attacks are even less effective. But keeping him terrified will at least help to keep us alive. He probably hits pretty hard now. I do appreciate him going after Hojo. Okay, so Phylon can get over here and war dance these dudes. Hojo has... Five movement, because he's a scout. So we can go one, two, three. Ah, there's a, there's no way to get the war dance on both of our uh, other characters and also have them both able to attack the wolf, sadly. So we'll just have to accept that uh, Hojo doesn't get to attack the wolf this turn. Actually, it looks like he's needed to uh, make sure that these extra extra guys go down. Because I really don't want to have to do with this. I think it's a really good idea to uh, to keep it to just the one enemy if we can. Alright. Now, this is how most boss fights work. They spawn uh, infinite dudes. So you can't, you can't always just get the boss alone, but if your crew is good at AoE, you can often get the boss alone for some period of time. So we did a lot of damage with that, and we lowered his armor back down to 25. Uh, and both of our crew members are confident for maximum punching. I think the buff from being confident is enough to make it so that it's better to punch him than to speak to him. Actually, it looks like it's slightly, very slightly more damage to use speech attacks still, but uh, the fact that we don't have a 100% hit chance probably makes it right to go aggressive. It looks like we're probably going to get him on this next turn. Phylon is really fantastic. I think War Dance might be one of the best abilities in the game. Oh, and he misses Grit. Yeah, we're definitely going to get this. Okay, that wasn't too bad. We didn't even lose a point of resolve. To be fair, our crew is pretty powerful. And then Phylon kicked a werewolf in the face. Of course, the claw is defeated. You've defeated the furry fiend. The region is now safe from bandits. You search their cabin and take home a nice haul and an impressive stolen bust. Wait, I thought it said stolen bust. Oh, whatever. Uh, so the hunting plate. Plus two campaign at the end of each expedition for each level of quick thinker in your crew is really good. What do we have, five levels right now? Because Hojo has four and she has one. Hell yeah. 
plus, at, at the very worst, that's plus 10 campaign four times, because there are four expeditions left, so that's a pretty good uh, result. With that, you enc your encounter with the werewolf bandit boss reaches its conclusion. Hojo is anxious to brag about this encounter at the renowned Explorers International Society. So we get yet another secret token. Uh, we got a treasure. Ah, and our next challenge is to be aggressive. Things are really working out for us. Oh, and that was Dolores' third level. So she's going to gain her pinning strike ability. That's a really big attack with a cooldown uh, that prevents the target from moving on the next turn. She can also get Primal Roar as a debuff that lowers the target's speech defense, or Dolores becomes more confident after casting Primal Roar. Uh, the value of this is that, you know, you Primal Roar people to build up confidence on yourself and then you punch harder. But we're good enough at giving confidence to people that I think we might want to take this Primal Roar thing um, for... This will make it a little bit easier when we have an encounter where we do have to try to speech our way through it. We have enough tools for being violent. Alright, well... Let's go to this node next. Ooh, it has a zero cost path out of it. My thinking was I want to go to this node next so that we can get this done because he's making progress on it. But if we go this way, get food. Or get some supplies, rather. Then go to here. We can take a zero cost node out of here, uh, which obviously helps us stretch our supplies a little further. So I'm going to take the risk that they might snatch that uh, challenge away from us. A scout could easily get some supplies here. Hojo will scout the area. If we had some survivalist perks, uh, we'd be guaranteed to hit this. But 88%'s not bad. It's not 100, though. Okay, we're good. Hojo scouts the area and hunts down some food for supplies, gets that extra campaign token, because of, uh, remember, he gets a campaign token whenever he succeeds now from that person we hired. Frylin is schmoozing up to Dolores constantly. Dolores likes Frylin's enthusiastic and attentive attitude, but is she aware of Frylin's sneaky motives? So Dolores has gained 5% speech power and plus 5 grit because she likes Frylin. Each crew member uh, can be liked or disliked by their their other their crew associates, and uh, each one has a unique buff that they give out in those situations. So I really like all this like crew interplay stuff. There's so many little systems intermeshing in this game. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. Some cultists have found a load of rare truffles. The alchemist will surely enjoy these yummy mushrooms. Well, let's steal those mushrooms. Listen, this is a cheerful game, and we're the protagonists, but I don't think of our crew as like particularly heroic or anything. We're definitely gonna like rob people all the time and stuff. So, Emotion Spreader, get four people terrified. I think we can do that. So we could, like, Primal Roar these guys, have Hojo try to terrify one of these dudes, and then... Actually, let's, uh, let's do it this way. Let's Primal Roar over here. Actually, we're not going to be able to get this, because I can't... I can't terrify these guys without knocking them out. Oh, well. I guess we're not going to get a motion spreader. Oh wait, do they do they still count when they're defeated? Hold on, Hojo, go uh, go try to terrify one of these dudes. They do still count when they're defeated. Okay, well then that'll be easy. Uh, I don't even really know. I guess I don't really want her to do anything. So next turn, we'll terrify one more person, and then we'll finish the encounter aggressive, and that should be enough, I hope, to push us, to push aggressive up to our dominant attitude. I guess there's, there's no reason not to uh, excite Dolores, which increases her speech power. So, let's go for one more Terrify. So now we have three defeated Terrified opponents and one live Terrified opponent. 
And now the violence. Just get on the other side of this person. Uh, so that Phylon can't be attacked by both of the enemies in the same turn. Uh, should I... Yeah, let's go ahead and hit this guy. I don't think he can make it over there anyway. I was debating the wisdom of just grouping up and trying to finish this guy off as quickly as possible. Alright, and we didn't want to go aggressive yet anyway, because when we're aggressive, we're going to take a uh, penalty, because they're devious. Uh, and aggressive is weak to devious. Alright, so now that we've switched to aggressive, we want to finish this battle quickly, because we're taking a minus 25 speech defense. I think we should be able to get this. I think Dolores' pinning strike should be enough damage. Yeah, pinning strike will do it. He's out for the count. And we get some more aggressive progress. Man, we're... Things are going really well for us. The cult is out of the way. The truffles are yours. Alright, and we're going to get this. We're making good progress on a lot of stuff here. We are, uh, we are going to catch up. Visit a wits challenge. Uh, well, we don't see any. Keep our eyes out. Let's tell a quick campfire story. <coughs> so, Dolores has two ranks of athlete. Dolores' crew story gives you extra collect tokens for each level of athlete in your crew. That might be a good way to go. We can keep banking this. Um, this is just going to get more and more powerful as we keep gaining perks. Uh, this gives plus two collect and plus two study for each level of athlete in your crew. Oh, sorry. Each level of athlete on your highest athlete character. And the bonus doubles if they're level five at least. That's not bad. This gives us two supplies immediately and one crew member gains charms or generous. Man, an extra level of beguiler or diplomat would not go amiss. You know, I'm gonna hold this as well, but I think we're gonna we're gonna play Dolores' crew story. These bonuses that accumulate at the end of each expedition are obviously uh, best played early. Dolores has a fantastic idea. As most renowned explorers know, Dolores is a pro wrestler known as La Bestia de Sangre in Mexico. I don't know what that means. Is that blood sangre? Dolores thinks wrestling is going places, and the crew can take advantage of this by forming a wrestling company. I guess. However, the crew needs some training first. Dolores will make an excellent mentor. Who will receive the training? Uh, Phylon could use a little bit of toughness. Phylon is first to receive training. Before Phylon can start her career, however, she is baptized with a new wrestling name. La Danza Mortal. I don't know. This probably dance... Life dancer? Something? I don't know. She masters the basics of wrestling. The training is heavy, but Phylon and Dolores see it through. Besides the obvious physical result, Phylene and Dolores also grow closer together. It's a first step for the wrestling company, but will Dolores be able to really train the crew to wrestling greatness? And those two have come to like each other more through the training, so uh, Phylene now likes Dolores and has gained Spirit. Spirit is your HP. Uh, yes, now she's up to 44. That's a, That makes me feel a little bit more comfortable with her. And... Uh, it should, the uh, the icon here hasn't updated, it should be showing two hearts. Now she admires Phylon. She has plus 10 speech, plus 10 grit, plus 10% speech power, and she has gained a Beguiler perk. So getting your crew to like each other more, so here's the proper icon. Getting your crew to like each other more is really powerful. You get a lot of benefit out of it. You find a small ruined church in the forest. You can study it for a little more research. Uh, Phylon has the best chance because she's an archaeologist. I guess let's go for it. Well, that's unfortunate. We do need Phylon to get some more XP. Oh, here we go. Uh, this gives you plus one encounter when spending insight for green tokens. It's not bad, especially with our encounter tokens being buffed up, but the value of boots is really high. I think, it, I think it's really important that we get this. She's also going to learn the assassination ability, which has a plus 150 power, so super, super powerful. If you're friendly and the opponent is not aggressive. So if it's a, if it's a sneak attack. 
If you do it this way, though, Phylin gains the Uncovered Assassin debuff, weakening her friendly abilities for the rest of the encounter, and you can only use this ability when flanking. This is really powerful. It takes a little bit of setup. Oh, hey, look. That's a porcelain point. Wolves. The crew is being followed by quite a lot of them. There are too many to take head on, but a, t a clever tactical move might dispose of them. Well, let's see if we can pull one off. Dolores has not shown a lot of tactical aptitude in the past. She's figuring it out, though. The wolves are drawn into a bottleneck and defeated. You remain unscratched. Alright, what's the new challenge? Oh, that could not have been better, because here's another wits note. We're getting really lucky here. Things are going well. Cultist raiders. A clever tactical maneuver might route them. Uh-oh. Uh, if the if the right edge of the thing is red, that means the penalty for failure is a little more severe. Usually it's either supplies or resolve. I would hate to lose supplies here, so Dolores, please be successful. Okay, pretty good. Dolores is really racking up that XP. Alright, what's our new challenge? Looking for wits again? Nah. That would have been maybe a little too much to ask for. This small town is absolutely ravaged. It seems that wolves were the culprits, but you wonder what terrifying beast would be able to do such a thing. You can still get some goods from the abandoned town. Uh, the granary probably has food, right? You're about to enter the building when a wolf attacks from the shadows. But Hojo defeats it with the power of quick thinking. Hojo leaps away from the wolf with his quick wits and the wolf crashes against the wall. The crew can quickly subdue the animal and you continue looking around. You enter the granary where you find a lot of supplies and some coin. Awesome. And that gets Hojo a level. So Hojo's going to get an extra trinket slot this level. Eventually all of our crew members will have two. Hojo gets plus six speech when your current attitude is friendly or replaces the dire mood with shaken. Oh, so this dramatically lowers the penalty for being friendly while the enemy is aggressive. I don't know that either of these are particularly powerful for us, but... This one seems like the one that's going to make it less likely for us to die. Yeah, we're probably not going to spend a huge amount of time friendly under any circumstance, so neither one of those is really great for us. Uh, I do want to hit this technique node, but I'm thinking that maybe we want to kind of sweep around. I want to try to hit as many nodes as possible on each expedition. We're going to have to be um, a lot more careful about taking debuffs at this point, because the boss fights after the first island are much more difficult. So you don't want to take a lot of hunger debuffs, but obviously you want to see as many nodes as you can. The sound of growling wolves is becoming ever more present. But again, Quick Thinker uh, comes in. Hojo's got so many levels of Quick Thinker that he's going to be able to just blow out any Quick Thinker challenge. Hojo makes a clever distraction and gets us extremely paid. I definitely made the right call buffing our campaign tokens instead of our encounter tokens. Phylin finds a small plate of silver. Probably fell off a cart. Sure. Aw, oh, we haven't had an encounter in such a long time that we didn't finish that challenge. This could be the Hidden Horde. We haven't seen a lot of blank nodes. Let's take a chance. It is. Awesome. Okay, so... I know that we like status a lot right now, but there's something to be said for having enough to, uh, science to push forward in the... Uh, one of the research trees that will open up to us after this expedition is really powerful. And I want to try to make sure that we can uh, that we can get down it. The sound of growling wolves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not afraid of wolves. Okay, we should definitely go this way. But there is a treasure over here. Oh, man. So if we go for this treasure, we'll have one supply afterward. Then we can go to here, we'll have one supply. Then here we'll take a hunger penalty. This probably links to like here, we'll take a hunger penalty. So that would mean... Oh, sorry, we take a hunger penalty right here. Right? Yeah, so we did one, two, three hunger penalties. Or we can just leave. As much as I love treasure, I really don't want to take that many hunger penalties before this boss fight. We're still, we're going to take one no matter what. Ooh, maybe not, actually. Let's try to get some supplies at this node. This seems like a fruitful part of the swamp. Maybe a survivalist could find something useful. Unfortunately, we don't have one. Maybe Hojo could find something useful. Please, please do this. Uh, 
he didn't. Well, we're gonna end up eating hunger penalties anyway. Hojo loses grit. Oh, I just realized. Um, we could swap these boots to Phylin now. She needs them way more than Hojo does. Oh, we're losing stuff to Rivalu. Alright, we're gonna eat another hunger penalty here. This place has obviously been raided by vicious bandits. Inside, you find a desk with a map, a bed, and a safe the bandits didn't manage to open. Well, let's crack that safe open. Phylin's pretty good at that with her rogue abilities. Please tell me there's food in here. Phylin manages to crack the safe and find a small uh, fortune inside. What do you do with it? You can keep it for a treasure hunt token or use it to fund the rebuilding of this area for a secret token. I think I would rather have a secret token. Um, gold is useful. No doubt. But remember, our secret tokens are buffed, and we are going to actually have a lot of things uh, to spend uh, status on. Let's check out this desk. Uh, on the desk you find a letter. The boss of the bandits, Boris the Claw, is not human. He has pointy ears and is way too hairy. Uh, if we acknowledge that he sounds like a tough opponent, everybody will armor up. That sounds like a good way to go here. And we can take this map. Uh, and it marks all of the nodes that have bandit stuff. Okay. And let's search this bed. The bed yields nothing uh, interesting, but the hut is a good place to take a little rest and use the supplies left behind. Okay. So gaining one point of supplies will mean we won't take a hunger penalty when this node finishes. So that's actually really lucky. Okay. Just one hunger penalty, and it's relatively minor, honestly. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. The ruins over there must be the secret fort. Once you finish exploring the ruins, the expedition will be over. This is the final battle. Right away, you're in for a nasty surprise. Cultists! Their leader seems to be a master alchemist. You come to disturb our secret occult fortress? You won't get past me! I don't know what's going on with my mouth today. I can't seem to pronounce words. What the hell is a fortress? Alright, so this uh, this boss fight's going to be a little bit harder. We, we get a bunch of extra tokens for finishing aggressive, and obviously... Uh, aggressive is the way we wanted to go anyway. The challenge is do 55 damage in a single speech attack. Well, these guys are weak to terrify. That's maybe actually doable. Eh, maybe not. We only have 30 speech power on our highest speaker. Alright, what is the way I want to do this? You have three moves, so even if we clear this guy out of the way, she can't get to this space where she'd be able to do two hits with her roar. I want to finish aggressive, but I don't want to spend a lot of time aggressive because we'll, uh, obviously we'll be taking a debuff. So I guess maybe we start it friendly? Oh, you know what we should do? We should start devious. Let's have Phylon run around here. Her devious attack has two range, so... Actually, I'm going to have her run all the way over to here. And here's why. We start Devious. So that we get a buff that gives plus damage to our friendly abilities. Now, these guys aren't weak to anything friendly, right? Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to pull this off. This attack does... It does have a higher base power. Yeah, we can't hit these guys without dropping them. Yeah, 38. I don't I don't think we're going to be able to hit 55. Our crew's just not speech focused enough. That's okay. You know, you can't get all the challenges. Uh, do I want to go friendly on this guy? Being friendly during their turn is probably a good idea. that will buff up our speech defense. And honestly, our defenses are not in a bad place so far. Oh, she missed her... Uh, the Alchemist has a, a stun attack that hits everybody in a little line. I spread out my crew so that we weren't vulnerable to it. Um, we were, she wasn't able to hit more than one person at a time. And then she went for just Phylon and missed due to Phylon's grit, so that's pretty fantastic. Oh, she's actually immune to being impressed. And she's only weak to Saturn, and she has 40 armor. This is actually going to be 
a thing that takes us several turns to get through. We're gonna have a really hard time beating her. Well, we'll throw up a uh, we'll throw up an enrage to strip some of that armor. You know, we'll get there. I'm confident that we will get there. Unfortunately, she's immune to Hojo's best uh, best attack here. I kind of think we want to try to push it back around to us being devious. Now nah, let's let's stay friendly for now. <laughs> I was thinking we want to push it around to us being devious so that we can get the bonus damage on friendly attacks again. But I'll I'll stick with the speech defense for now. Man, Rival is at twenty five porcelain. He's uh he's advancing those two, the two big challenges a lot faster than we are. It seems like they may have tuned up the difficulty on him a little bit since the beta, which is a good thing for sure, because Rivalu was uh, was a little too easy to beat in the beta. I had one game where I beat him by I think 55. All right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to move into aggressive mode soon. We're accumulating a lot of points of friendliness, and. Uh, But probably not right this second. I'm gonna hit with a devious attack here, just to avoid building up unnecessary points of friendliness. And then, is this the moment where we start accumulating? I'd like to do it after we lay down and enrage, you know? Oh, you know what? We should break... Here, I'll do this. We should we should break our friendliness with Phylan's assassinate ability. Actually, wait, maybe doing that isn't a good idea. Cause I'm concerned that doing it might uh, might end the encounter. She might hit so hard that she just kills the boss. And we have to build up some points of aggressiveness. Alright, I think this is the time to switch it up. Well hold on. If I ran Phylan over here. She can get a full value assassinate off. Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's do fifty six damage. Okay, we're at four points. Oh, actually, we're fine. The uh, so I said I'd talk about these a little bit more. You accumulate points in an attitude every time you do anything. Uh, every time you use an attack of that attitude, basically. You accumulate more points for defeating an enemy with attacks of that attitude. And you accumulate a lot of extra points for defeating a boss. So yeah, we're at six points, and Hojo's attack will take us over the top. Oh no, it won't finish her off, though. Well, it might. Th remember, this is showing us the minimum damage. But it looks to me like we're probably not going to get this here. So we're going to have to endure a turn of us having the speech defense debuff. I thought we were going to be able to finish her off. Oh boy. Well, here's hoping it's not too bad. Ouch. We're, we're gonna lose some resolve. We're not gonna lose the encounter, because I don't think anybody can hit Hojo. I, they're all too far away. But, um... Dolores is... Oh! The rough terrain! So these, uh, these darkened squares over here cost extra movement to move through. They weren't able to get through fast enough. Dolores! Get your revenge! Yeah, that's what I think of you. Okay, now let's get out of here. I think I'm a little close. Yeah, yeah, Rivalu gets more porcelain. Look, we're gonna catch up. I'm not worried. We're making some very serious bank here. Alright, you defeat those pesky cultists with force. Now you can explore the ruined fort at your own pace. As the crew looks around to find the alchemy lab, Dolores feels a bit uneasy. Slightly scared, Dolores asks if Phylan believes in alchemy and the powers of the occult. I don't remember what these two choices do. Like, I remember uh, that they give you uh, different chances at the treasures, but I don't remember which ones are which one's better for us in this situation. Let's go for the Philosopher's Stone. It sounds like it's gold-related. I like money. 
Also, this option does give us campaign tokens, which we like. All right, so what did we get? Oh, we got the uh, we got the other thing anyway. So we can take some campaign tokens, some bonus to the payout of our campaign tokens, or uh, bonuses for achieving devious results to encounters. These are not very good for us. I'm just going to take a buff to our campaign tokens. That's going to be a lot of extra status over the course of the game. Alright, well, that's unfortunate. That didn't, uh, that went pretty well for us, uh, as far as the actual expedition itself goes, but we are pretty far behind now. So, we gained an extra insight, we gained an extra supply capacity, uh, the hunting plate gives us ten campaign tokens, and Dolores' thing gives us six collect tokens. That's a pretty good haul, honestly. We just gotta catch up on this porcelain, man. Gonna get our grit up, and we have to get our engineering levels up. Ooh, as you return from London, you see receive bad news. Rivalu and his crew went on to take care of the elderly when they finished an expedition early. The Emperor is quite pleased with this noble gesture and awarded Rivalu a special title. Of course, you have no time for such nonsense. That's nice of them. Show off. Wang Tonghe, who told you this, also informs you that the Emperor wants to spice things up a little. If you refrain from doing two star expeditions, the Emperor will reward you a challenger title. It might help in your race. Uh... So does that mean I can't explore any two-star expeditions starting now? Okay, so you can get this is new. I didn't play. Uh, I didn't play the final beta build. This was not in the builds that I played. So you keep your options open. I guess we can't get multiple titles. Well, this title is only worth two points. Let's see if we can find a better one. And with that adventure behind us, we can send a report to an explorer welcoming city to unlock a new shop or something. So I think we probably want to unlock. We want to send a uh, send a report to Constantinople, Constantinople, to unlock a new entourage hall, because uh, the Constantinople entourage hall is awesome. So let's take advantage of all of this status that we got. Well, I guess let's start with research. So. We're going to spend a lot of our research token, our research points from now on in the psychology tree. Uh, this gives us, if we complete this, we'll get extra renown from anything that gives us status. And it'll give us uh, access to stuff like an emotion having a stronger effect, lots of extra supply capacity, even better upgrades from secret tokens, plus secrets whenever beguilers and quick thinkers roll stuff. Obviously, we're going to be able to take advantage of that. And... Uh, the ability to unlock new jobs in Asia where we can spend our insight. Uh, these jobs give the big tokens, not the small tokens. So we want to get to this pretty quickly. That said, I probably want to take Lecture Expert. Uh, we're about to have to spend some insight because we're over our insight cap. You, see, you can see the cap goes up at the end of ex every expedition, but we're going to be accumulating insight quickly enough that we have to spend it. Uh, so this will improve the efficiency of our insight spends and it will give us the history bonus, so whenever we get a helper, we get some more renown. And that will help us with the renown challenge. Okay, so let's spend our status. We can get four status tokens by spending with Phylin. We get a small amount of research. We can get gold and status. This is 35 to 50 gold and 21 to 32 status. Versus 52 to 88 status. Hmm. That's interesting. I kind of want to spend one token on uh, research. Because if we can get 10 more points of research, we can unlock psychology and end up getting a bunch of extra campaign tokens uh, throughout the next adventure. So let's do one of those. Actually, hold on. Before we do anything else, let's buy some dudes, because these dudes may alter our payouts. So, one of the reasons that the Constantinople Entourage Shop is so great is that it has this. It has a specialist who gives you uh, extra payout from tokens. So, do we want research from our collect, gold from our campaign, or status from our study? I'm actually pretty torn here. Gold from our campaign would mean that we're going to end up having a ton of money. 
Which is really powerful. It's, it's good to have equipment. You know what? I think this is right. And the other option is, since we want to focus so much on status, the other option is adding status to our study tokens so that we have double status. You know, we have uh, enough status to be able to afford probably everybody we want to buy by the end of the game. I think this is a better overall option. Uh, money is going to become very important, because the expeditions are going to get quite difficult. Oh, I backed out. We were not done yet. Let's hire some more people. So we can pick up some more perks. We can get some more tokens. So we can gain Rogue, plus Collect Tokens whenever we enter a Technique Challenge. Some Diplomat, plus Campaign Tokens whenever we enter a Cultural Challenge. Or Quick Thinker, plus Study Tokens. We need Survivalist and Engineer most. Engineer particularly. We don't have access to any Engineer guys. Let's upgrade the Entourage Hall one more time and see... okay. So we probably should uh, we probably should pick up some engineer perks so that we can begin to participate in uh, in these challenges. So we're really going to want to pick up combustion on her as well. She has tinker and combustion. This is piloting, so this is something different. Uh, as much as I want to really focus on campaign stuff, like we have to get some engineer levels, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So let's give Phylon an Engineer perk. Uh, we have enough status to buy all of the specialists here. We probably want to pick up some points of Diplomat. She has languages already. I guess, what's our next expedition going to be? We've unlocked the three-star expeditions now. That is uh, the Memphis Desert, which gives a lot of gold. And works well for archaeologists, athletes, rogues, and survivalists. This is a pretty good one for us. Uh, we could go to the Andean Adventure. Uh, diplomat, rogue, survivalist, and engineer. This is a pretty good expedition, in my opinion. It's well designed. It has a lot of good rewards in it. Uh, we're not amazing at this stuff. Or the other three-star expedition is the Highlands. Beguiler, diplomat, tactician, engineer... This has a really, really good payout in status and gold, um, but we're not super well suited to it. We have a single point of Diplomat and no Tactician. So I'm trying to figure out, based on what I think we should do, which perks we should invest in. We're already double Rogue and double Engineer. Again, we have the problem where we have no Survivalist and only one Diplomat. I think we should go to the Indian Adventure. So let's focus on getting Diplomat, Survivalist, Rogue, and Engineer perks. Which makes sense with our goals anyway. Uh, so a point of Diplomat would actually be pretty good for us. And we could pick up a Naturalist I can Electromagnetics perk, or actually... Don't we have a specialist? Yeah, we have one that hasn't been purchased at the first building yet. So we can gain another point of Diplomat and a campaign token whenever a Diplomat succeeds on the adventure wheel. The stuffy butler. That would put us at three Diplomat. It wouldn't be too hard to get to level four. Yeah, let's do it. So, etiquette or customs? Uh, let's pick up etiquette. Because I think there's an item that gives customs that's not too hard to get. We also unlocked a new trinket shop. Uh, so we can pick up 10 armor, beguiler storytelling, quick thinker wits. Here's a tactician item. And it gives us plus 25 speech defense when we're aggressive and the enemy is devious. This is something that might be really important, actually, because that's a situation we could end up in. And this gives Diplomat Politics. Yeah, the Corsair's Coin seems like a, a thing that we ought to probably buy. And a Point of Tactician is useful. We'd have to upgrade this shop to its maximum and then spend 300 gold on this, though. 
So maybe this is something we pick up in the in the future. Actually, I guess we have enough uh, status. We can probably hire a helper, right? Yeah, we can't hire um, a great one. We could hire plus gold from encounter or plus gold from collect. We're going to get as many encounter tokens as we can, pretty much always. So let's do that. Okay. And then we still have a lot of gold to spend. And some of this. So let's do one, let's do one study. I think spending a single point of insight to get a bunch of extra campaign tokens on the next adventure is probably worth doing. Uh, we're just not going to get this. Nine study tokens. We would have to spend two more points of insight on studying. And it's only one point. We'll let him have it. Even though he's massively ahead, I know. Uh, can we get to train survivalist? I know there's one really cheap survivalist thing. Is Can we find a second point of survivalist somewhere? This is not cheap. This would require us to upgrade the shop to level 5. That's going to be a lot of money. So we're not going to get this either then, because I think he's going to... Yeah, he's going to make two steps of progress on this. Well, you know, maybe we're going to lose the game. That could happen. <laughs> that could totally happen. Alright, well, we have to spend some insight here. So we can spend for gold. Right, we can do this. We can spend for gold to buy equipment with, and then also end up with some extra status. Because the one, the one group of specialists we can buy from, the only thing we could get out of them is naturalist. We could get, like, plus two campaign whenever you enter a technique challenge for the first time, which is fine. I really would prefer to pick up perks, though. And this perk just is not, not jumping out at me as being terribly important. So yeah, let's spend our let's spend our insight for gold for now. I bet Dolores' lectures are fascinating. Okay, uh So let's go ahead and hire another specialist. Journalist seems fine. Can't afford a lobbyist, unfortunately. The cost of a uh, helper goes up with each helper of that type that you have, unfortunately. So I guess we could do this, or we could, like, buy two merchants, probably. But we're not going to see that many collect tokens. This next fo this next expedition is focused on study and status. So I guess let's just get a journalist. That's fine. And, of course, we're gaining renown, which is going to contribute toward getting this, uh... By the way, this famous thing, you're not competing with Rivalu on this one. He can't get renown uh, in this mode. So this will be so this will be a source of points that can help us catch up to him. All right, let's buy cool stuff. Uh, we probably ought to buy boots. We should upgrade the shop and then buy better boots for Phylin. Man, we're not getting anywhere close on this grit challenge. And then trinkets. Uh, so we could... These trinkets that we have access to now are not incredible. We should probably take this. Survivalist is going to matter in the next area. This gives us a cheap survivalist perk. And then maybe... Just spend money upgrading the shop. We could pick up athlete. Oh, all terrifying abilities gain plus 10% speech power. Uh, boost the power of Primal Roar. And an extra level of Athlete will let us uh, get more gold from her... Uh, what do you call it? Interesting. It's the same Athlete perk that she has access to next level. So maybe she takes Wits instead? Yeah, maybe. Uh, and then we have enough money to buy, like, a cheap attack item. So whose attack stats are looking the weakest? Hojo could use a little love. Let's buy Hojo some gloves. Uh, gloves give attack power and speech power. Obviously the books are the inverse. They give more speech than attack. Alright, well, I think we're basically ready for the next expedition. But, of course, this, uh, this video is already a million years long. 
So uh, future videos in the series will be shorter as we have to explain less. Come back next time. We're heading to the Andean Adventure. And we'll see you then.